Everyone revising for their A-level chemistry exams will be familiar with the questions where you need to explain the differences in structure and bonding of some compounds, using data like melting points or electrical conductivity. But even after lots of these walkthroughs, you may feel like you're not getting any better from one question to the next. So in this quick guide, I'll cover what information you need to be hitting the answer with to make sure you can make better progress and deliver a consistent high-grade answer each and every time. Most of the exam questions need you to split your answer into three key areas, with the final one I'll mention here, melting points, needing the most information. Your answer should also follow these general guidelines. You should split it into bullet points and subheadings where appropriate. Use lots of scientific vocabulary, don't walk around the term, make sure you use the exact phrasing. Use all of the data in the question, even if you don't feel you need to and never assume. For example, just because you've said something is strong doesn't mean you've implied a lot of energy is required to break it. So when starting our answer, we're gonna kick off by identifying the lattice structure, and we need to use terms here of giant or simple, and then either metallic, ionic, or covalent. Do this for each structure and feel free to group those with the same one to save on some time. But do be very specific and use the correct formulae to describe the substances you're referring to. Next up here, we have electrical conductivity. The challenge here is making sure that you're not only familiar with the good and poor conductors, but that you also refer to the correct particles in each substance. When reviewing your work, most people remember that a solid or molten giant metallic lattice structure will conduct electricity. But if you're on the OCRA specification, where people often go wrong is using terms other than saying that this is because of the delocalized electrons. Be specific here. Don't tweak the language and stick to that that you've seen in past papers. Likewise, lots of people remember that when molten or aqueous, a giant ionic lattice structure can also be a good conductor of electricity. But how many people remember to say that this is because the ions are mobile? Check the mark schemes on this. I know I have, and they're very tight with the phrasing they will accept. Finally, we have melting point, and this is your big comparison opportunity. Melting point here is essentially a commentary on the strength of the attraction being broken when a sample melts, but your job is to make this link as clear as day to the examiner. For each substance, be nice and clear and emphasize what is being broken and how the amount of energy required to do so compared to another substance you have is different based on the data. For example, let's say you had an exam question which was comparing methane to potassium bromide. The melting point of CH4 is lower than that of KBr, and this is because the London forces in CH4 are weaker than the ionic bonds in KBr. That's the end of your answer, right? Not really. If you check a lot of mark schemes, they then want a further comment about energy. So for example here, my final point is that more energy is required to break the ionic bonds in KBr than the London forces in CH4. You might not think to include this, but remember what I said, never assume. Before we finish up, let's have a look at some common mistakes and misconceptions that I really need you to avoid. First off, lots of people incorrectly allocate the structure and bonding. Make sure you've got a technique set aside to ensure you're saying the right substances have got the right structure and bonding. I don't see anyone saying that KBr has got strong intermolecular forces, for example. It's a giant ionic lattice structure. It's just got those ionic bonds. Next up, lots of people do forget about intermolecular forces. The number of people I've seen say that CH4 has got weak bonds and therefore it's easy to boil. Absolutely not. It's London forces and other intermolecular forces when it comes to that simple molecular lattice structure. The third point is just like I said before, assuming two things mean the same thing. Finally here, I see a lot of people not making comparisons, so they correctly list out all of the information for the different structures, but don't then compare one to another. We're looking at language here like stronger and weaker when it comes to comparing those attraction forces. So what's next for you? Click the links on screen now to be taken to a range of different tutorial videos from across the A-level. Perhaps you need to look at how the halogen trend is explained using London forces, or maybe you wanna look at periodicity in more detail. Until next time, like, subscribe, and happy revising.